안녕하십니까 이존 치과의 손영입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Son Yonghee of E Good Dental Clinic. Today, I'm going to show you a case where there were severe mobility in four lower anteriors, and the patient felt discomfort upon mastication. If you look at the X-ray, this is CT before surgery number 31 and 41. You can see that extraction has been done, but healing is not fully complete. Number 41 and 31 extractions were done, but the extraction sockets are not fully healed. In number 32, there is a very short root. There is mobility, but the patient does not feel significant discomfort. If you look at number 42, there's a bit of alveolar bone left, but if I were to place implant in number 41 and 32, another surgery may be required if a problem occurs in relation to number 42. In this case, number 32 and 42 are going to be extracted and implants will be placed in number 32 and 42. In today's surgery, the point you should take note of is that one MS kit will be used. In the case of lower anterior, it is difficult to use regular diameter implants. 4.0 mm TS implants will be used. Please take note how I've set the vertical position of the implants. How much deep should the implants go? This is something you need to take note of. When you do immediate implant placement, you need to consider remodeling that occurs after treatment and gingival recession Therefore, you need to place the implant about 1 to 1.5 millimeter deeper in order to prevent aesthetic issues. In order to compensate for gingival recession or remodeling of alveolar bone, we not only need to place the implants correctly, but we need to also address the extraction socket today. Socket preservation is going to be done using AOS collagen. Graft will be done not just in extraction socket, but to get more full contour of gingiva. Graft will be done up to the soft tissue zone. So dual zone graft concept will be utilized. After surgery, abutment as well as provisional restoration will be delivered. This is the overview of today's surgery, and let's take a look at the surgical clip.
Surgery is over. Let's review the surgery. If you look at the panoramic image, number 32 and 42 implants have been placed in appropriate positions. Transfer abutments were used to deliver provisional restoration. Let's look at standard image. The key point in today's surgery is that full thickness flap was not reflected and in order to get as much of an aesthetic effect, only extraction was done and no other incisions were made. Minimally invasive implant surgery was proceeded. If you look at standard image, implant position looks appropriate and on CT, as shown in number 32, there is sufficient bone in the buccal site of number 32 and collagenated bone graft was used. Bone graft was done not just in the bone area but also in the tissue area. This was done to get good soft tissue contour. The same concept was applied in number 42. Implant was placed and buccolingual position of the implant looks appropriate. Let's review the surgery. Once again, extraction was done and one guide template was adapted. One MS kit is very useful kit, but the precautions we need to take when using one MS kit is that when using narrow diameter implant for implant placement, the number of drill is very limited. In other words, if drilling is done in unwanted direction, there's very little we can do in terms of adjusting implant angle. If the number of drill goes down when using initial drill, we need to pay a lot of attention. The tactile sense we get as we do drilling, if you feel like the drill is being displaced, do not proceed any further and you need to take precautions to prevent the drill displacement. For instance, you can make indentation to where initial drilling is going to be made. We need to minimize drill displacement and then proceed with drilling to get good results. To apply dual zone graft concept, the implant driver is in place and without removal, collagenated bone graft was done. In this area, abutment needs to be positioned in order to secure that space. This is the method we use. Or else, you can connect the abutment first and then do dual zone graft. It wouldn't matter which order you choose. As you can see in the buccal side, there's a lot of space. In the anterior zone, it is ideal to position the implant like this. Transfer abutments have been connected and you can see that collagenated bone graft covers up to the soft tissue area. Even if they are exposed, no major problems occurred. Because it is collagenated bone graft, gingival healing will occur nicely. Provisional restorations have been provided and surgery was closed. This is what I always do, but in the case of PONIC, I use this PONIC to do gingival compression, to do gingival molding, but right after surgery, I try to leave a gap here so that healing can occur more nicely. If there is food impaction here, self-cleansing can be done if there is a little bit of gap so it will be more favorable for healing. Collagen graft, rather than making it more exposed, less exposure is more favorable, therefore sling sutures were used. When I delivered the provisionals, I thought of it more as providing restoration as to doing loading. I made sure that I did occlusal adjustments so that they were out of occlusion and were not subject to loading. That is my preference and I believe this is a more safer choice. In the case of this patient, after three months, final restorations will be delivered and loading will be applied.
In the case of lower anterior case, if we place implants freehand, it can be very difficult, especially when placing multiple implants, it can be very difficult to find the right path. When we use one guide in such instances, we can get excellent results. That is why I've used it in my surgery. Thank you for watching.